All right, our next section is integration by parts. In integration by parts, we are trying to reverse the product rule. So just a reminder that uh, the product rule is if you're trying to take the derivative of you know, a function, the product of two functions, f times g, then that derivative was f times g prime minus, uh, or plus uh, f prime times g. So you take the derivative of one of those products uh, and multiply it by the other. So what we're doing here is we're looking at the antiderivative. So uh, if we kind of think about the maybe the fundamental theorem of calculus, if I try to take the antiderivative of this side, I'll have the antiderivative of uh, f times g prime. That will equal the antiderivative of f times g prime plus the antiderivative of f prime times g. Uh, the antiderivative of f prime times g is just going to be the antiderivative of the derivative. It's just going to give us f times g. But I do have a couple other integrals over here on the other side. Uh, the antiderivative of f times g prime plus the antiderivative of f prime times g. And what we do is we solve for one of these. We try to get one of these by itself. Uh, and so you can, you can um, subtract the antiderivative from both sides of the equation, and we'll get f times g is equal or minus, minus the antiderivative of f times g prime is equal to the antiderivative of f prime times g. Or the usual way we write it is the antiderivative of f prime g is equal to f times g minus the antiderivative of f g prime. So when we're looking at trying to take the antiderivative of something like maybe um, uh, antiderivative of, uh, how about uh, uh, x times e to the x. So what I want to do is I want to think of that as that there's two functions in there that are being multiplied together. Um, I want to uh, let uh, one of them be a derivative and the other uh, be, you know, one of them be f prime and the other be g. And uh, so one of these two pieces, so I've got two things in there, I've got the x and the e to the x. And so you have to decide, uh, and it gets, you get used to it as you do more of these, you get more and more used to what to do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, in here f prime is my uh, e to the x and I'm going to say g is the x part of that. And so what I want to do is I want to find uh, on the other side of the equation I just have f so I want to find the antiderivative of e to the x and of course the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x and then I've got a g and a g prime on the other side. So I need a g prime, and the g prime of x is just 1. Uh, and actually, that's kind of why I chose it, because when you take the derivative, um, you're going to look for two pieces in, inside your antiderivative. One you're going to take the derivative of, and one you're going to take the antiderivative of. Uh, and so what you want to do is you want it so that the piece that you're taking the derivative of gets simpler. Um, so I'm going to take g is equal to x, and so then g prime will equal 1. Uh, and so what I can do, if I, if I take now my integral of x e to the x dx, what that will equal, it's going to equal my f times g, so 1 times e to the x, minus the antiderivative, oh, whoops, sorry, it's f times g, and g here is x f times g, so x e to the x, minus um, g prime times f. So g prime would just be 1 times e to the x dx. And so I end up with uh, something that doesn't have an integral in it, and then I got something with an integral, and hopefully that's an easier integral to evaluate uh, if you do this. So uh, let's go ahead, we can go ahead and find the antiderivative of e to the x, and that of course is just e to the x. So the, uh, and then plus the c at the end. So if I'm looking for the antiderivative of x e to the x dx, I found that it's x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. All right, so it's super easy. 
uh, super nice to do that. You just have to break it up into two pieces. How about another one? Uh, how about the antiderivative of uh, antiderivative of how about cosine of x divided by um, uh, cosine of x divided by uh, 2x no let's do how about uh, um, how about e to the x times the cosine of x dx that's kind of a fun one uh, so I'm gonna say f and g uh, I need one of those to be f prime and I need one of those to be g um, so I'm gonna say f prime is uh, let's do f prime is e to the x again I, I'm kinda not sure on this one um, I'm just gonna start at it here and see what happens and then g would be cosine of x and so then f would be the anti or the antiderivative of e to the x which is just e to the x and g prime is going to be uh, the derivative of cosine which is minus sine of x okay and that's one of the things that gets kind of confusing because in these problems you're taking both a derivative and an antiderivative and it's it's kind of easy to get confused about which one you're trying to do all right so uh, let's see that's going to be um, so I, I know that this antiderivative is going to be the f times the g so cosine x times e to the x minus the antiderivative of uh, f times g prime f times g prime so uh, I want uh, minus sine of x e to the x dx in there and uh, let's see that oh that's not still something that's too easy to evaluate so let's just keep going here um, we've got cosine of x e to the x plus I'm going to combine those two negative signs there sine of x e to the x dx and let's just try it again let's just use uh, a different function so let's evaluate this one I'm going to try, um, how about uh, f prime, let's stay with, with well, let's maybe change our letters, uh, let's do k prime is equal to e to the x and g is equal to sine of x, oops I already used g, uh, how about h, h is equal to sine of x uh, and so then I, I want to use that same sort of process, I want to take the antiderivative of e to the x to find k and then I want to take h prime I want to look at the derivative of sine and the derivative of chi sine is cosine alright and so what I'm gonna end up with is cosine x e to the x uh, is part of the original equation and then I'm gonna have I'm looking at the antiderivative of the sine x e to the x so it's going to be h times k, so a sine x e to the x minus the antiderivative of uh, k times h prime, cosine x e to the x dx. And this is still, I'm working on the antiderivative of e to the x cosine x dx, and I'm kind of back to where I started but this is an equation, this is an equal sign, and you can do what you normally do to equal signs. I can add this integral to both sides of the equation and add the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx to both sides of the equation. And what I'll end up with now is 2 times the integral of e to the x cosine of x dx and I'll know that that's equal to cosine of x e to the x plus sine of x e to the x and so if I'm trying to find that integral all I have to do, I don't have any more integrals on the right hand side uh, and I have the integral where I've doubled the integral on the left hand side so let's divide by 2 so the antiderivative of e to the x cosine x dx is going to be one half 
of cosine x e to the x plus sine of x e to the x. All right, plus c. Don't forget the plus c at the end. We're doing an antiderivative. We need that plus c there. If you want to double check, uh, suppose that you start with your answer. Say y equals 1 half cosine e to the x plus 1 half sine, uh, whoops, I left much of my x, uh, sine x e to the x, cosine x e to the x, sine x plus c, and then take the derivative. So if I take the derivative, um, I should get just the e to the x cosine x, because this, this, this y that I've written down here is the antiderivative of that. So let's try it. So, oh, I gotta do the product rule. So I'm gonna have one half cosine of x, and I have to take the derivative of e to the x, so that's e to the x, plus uh, the derivative of one half cosine of x, which is gonna be minus one half sine of x, e to the x. And then I'm gonna add to that the derivative of the second piece, and so that's gonna be, I'm gonna start with one half sine of x, and multiply by the derivative of e to the x, so that's just e to the x. Uh, and then uh, I need to take the derivative of 1 half sine of x, which is going to be 1 half cosine of x times the e to the x. And then the derivative of c is 0, because since c is a constant in there. And let's see what happens when you collect like terms. Oh, cool, the sine of x is canceled out. And I get 1 half cosine x e to the x plus 1 half cosine x e to the x, which is just going to be uh, cosine x e to the x. So I can, you can always take the derivative of the answer. Uh, and if you've done the antiderivative correctly, the derivative should turn out to be uh, the inside of your integral, your antiderivative, because that's what you're trying to come up with. All right, thanks.